Hey peeps, welcome back. We are talking Love After Lockup season five, episode 34. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, you guys, so it is Tuesday. I am just now watching Love After Lockup. So let's just get into it. So the episode starts out with Zara and Troy. And Zara, you know, she's had the sex, okay? They've had the sex. And she found out that Troy is working with a little something. She spent a lot of time talking about the size of this man's penis. Girl. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Hey, listen, no one gives a damn, okay? Just her. So then she informs him that she has set up for him to go pick his mom up from the train station and that his mother will be spending the night with them. Now we find out that when Troy was two or three years old, his mom dropped him off with her best friend and never returned. He ended up going through the foster care system. Then he ended up living with his father and his father received help from his aunt um, as far as raising him goes and that his seven years that he spent in jail his mother never visited, she never wrote, she never put any money on his books. He hadn't heard from this woman at all. But Zariah thought it was a good idea. Probably still pronouncing her name wrong. Anyway, Zariah thought it was a good idea for her to set this meeting up, even though she states herself that sometimes his mom can be hard to deal with. And I thought she overstepped. Yes, you are his wife, but you never knew him outside in the real world. And two, you know that he's got this issue with his mother, which I do not blame him. I think that him and his mom should talk, but I think it should have been at his time when he was ready for this. Now, then she introduces him to her son and her sister. Her son was overly excited to see Troy, calling him daddy and everything. Listen, that little boy was so excited. I was saying to myself, I really hope that this relationship works out. If for nothing else, let it work out for this little boy. We find out that because she never put a father's name on the birth certificate, that Troy was able to just fill out a few legal forms and all of a sudden, presto, he's the father. I did not know that you could do that. I don't know. I guess we learn something every day. She says that she's really excited about Troy's relationship with her son. He has been a constant father for her son. And I thought, the man's been in jail for seven years. How has he been constant? You mean these phone calls? Ah, okay. Anyway, I think that she really did overstep having him meet up with his mom. Just because her and her parents are doing well does not mean that him and his mom will do well. However, he did end up meeting with his mom and they cried when they seen each other, but on their drive to pick his mom up, you could see on his face that he was really scared and nervous. It turns out that his mom had a problem with alcohol. So that's what kept her away all of those years. I pretty much felt as soon as I seen her get off the train, I said, his mom's been through something. I knew she had been through something. But he asked her, you know, why did you leave me? Why haven't I, you know, heard from you? And she explained to him about some of the things that she went through with her alcoholism. And it seems that she's sober now. So she's trying to live a better life. She's trying to get all of her ducks in a row. She seems to be trying to do better. Troy asked her some advice. He said, what do you think about my marriage? And she told him something that I thought was true. She said, you and her don't know each other outside of prison. So I think that you should take it slow. Take everything one day at a time. Don't rush into anything because when you rush stuff, you ruin it. And she tells him, listen, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I have to agree with that. If you don't really know this lady, you guys have only seen each other during prison visits and phone calls. You don't know how you are outside of jail. So taking it slow one day at a time, one moment at a time, I think is the best advice. Um, out of all of the felons on the show, Troy seems to be the one that has the most emotional intelligence. Um, I really liked him so far. You know, like I said in my spoiler alert from last week, that he seems to be on the right path. 
according to certain sources. Um, I think that Troy might be a decent a decent dude. We'll see what happens, but I like him so far. Shantae and True. Honey, listen, I want to feel bad for her, but I just can't. I really can't. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. She is realizing that she made a huge mistake. This woman has wasted the last three years of her life spending money that she does not have, losing her job, and, you know, clowning around with this dude. And as far as I'm concerned, ma'am, you were just, you know, paying for your pen pal subscription. I'm just saying that's a very steep price to pay to pen pal with this guy. So my thing is, she's talking to True, but she never really says exactly what's on her mind. She never really just looks him dead in the face and comes out with how she is feeling. When she's talking to him and he asks her what she thinks or how she feels, oh, I'm cool, oh, I'm cool, but you really are not. Then she sits there and she asked him, when you go back to Independence, Missouri with me, are you going back as my fiance or a guy that I'm dating, trying to build, or are you coming back as friends? A what? Okay. I have always been a believer in only ask the question if you're ready to hear the answer. If you have your big girl panties on and you are ready for the truth, for the real, then ask the question. Otherwise, keep being dumb. You know, just stay in la la land. Okay. I don't think that she realized when she got with him three years ago, this dude has been in jail for 13 or 15 years. He went to jail as a teenager. What did you think? That while he was in jail, all of a sudden he was going to grow up? I think that he is stuck at that same age that he went to jail. And it's also been said, and he said it on the show, you never came to visit him in prison. That too could have given you a little bit of a warning. If you would have went to visit him in prison, you would have been able to see a little more of who he is. Prison definitely stunted his growth and he is acting like a total child. And you have sat there and spent all of your savings, moved to another city, dragging your kids along with you for this guy. It's like, I drive down there to pick you up from jail. You're my fiance. We get back to my house. You're my roommate. He tells her that, yes, he would like for them to be dating, trying to build. And he wants to go with the flow, go with the flow. And I would have told him, flow your ass to your mama's house. You and your flow, head over to your mama's. Anyway, while he's going with the flow, he wants to be able to date other people. I said, girl, please, you better take your boring ass, pack your shit, get into your car and go on back to Independence, Missouri and tell him your shit is left out on the front stoop. Please have your sister take you to your mama's house. Girl, please. This man is playing you and you are allowing it. She's out on the porch crying. Oh my gosh, I've wasted three years of my life. You made the decision to waste three years of your life talking to somebody on the phone that you don't know. That was your decision. Then he sits down with her trying to shuck and jive. He really does still want to be with her and everything, but he's about to go to the gym with his sister. His sister picks him up and all of a sudden the girl that he was asking his sister about in the last episode calls. So she's going to show up to the gym to spend some time with True and work out. He's all smiling and grinning like a 14 year old. I mean, seriously, she's back at the house with a sad face and tears in her eyes, talking about she's sure that his sister is helping him cheat on her. She sure is. She absolutely invited that girl over to the gym to hang out with him, knowing good and damn well that him and that girl used to mess around at some point. Dante, this is not a mistake. This is a decision. You didn't make a mistake. At your big age, you made a decision. You decided that you wanted to give all your money, all of your time to this inmate that you had never even cared enough about to drive up to the damn prison to see him. This is, this is your mistake. 
Now you got to deal with it. I cannot feel sorry for you. Not one tiny bit. Moving on. Kim and Joey. All right. So Kim is crazy as hell. Okay. Kim is out of her damn mind. We find out that Kim was cheating with Joey. So her and her ex were having some problems. She found out her ex was cheating. So she started cheating with Joey. But while she was cheating with Joey, she was still having the sex with her ex. She gets pregnant by her ex, breaks up with Joey, then marries her ex only to find out that he's still cheating, allegedly, and starts hooking up with Joey again. Then we see her and Joey, they have a wild night of the sex. Joey lets us know that he never uses protection. He is always just out there swinging that thing with nothing on it. I said, oh God, that is real scary. This dude is all over town using drugs and being drunk and you just out here, you know, just slanging that thing with no protection. Talking about Kim, I think we might've made a baby last night. What? Kim, Kim, I think it's time for you to turn your brain all the way to hell up. No, ma'am. What the hell are you doing and what are you thinking? She is an absolute idiot. I, I'm sorry. I will. I want to like Kim. I do like Kim. I can see that this woman is good at heart, but she ain't bright. This is a bunch of bullshit. So he tells her that they need to stop by a store because he needs to buy Christmas presents for the boys from him. Well, where is your money? Well, don't worry about it. He didn't need any money because she's his sugar mama. He tells her when they pull up to this child boutique store that he wants to go in and pick out the toys without her input because they're from him. Hand me your credit card. Excuse me, identity theft guy. Hell to the no. Uh-uh. I'm telling you, she gave him her debit card. I said, wait, wait. He went to jail for the identity theft. He probably has memorized your entire card number, expiration date, and CVC code on the back. Oh Lord, no. This dude gets into the toy store and spends $318. I said, why the hell are y'all not at the local Walmart? Why are you not at the local Walmart? She is highly concerned about how much money he spent talking about you went big. He said, oh yeah, it's for the kids. It's easy to go big when it's somebody else's damn money. She tells him, well, how, how much did you spend? $318. Her face looked devastated. Okay. She tells him that she's a teacher's assistant and she only makes $15 an hour. I said, what? You can't afford Joey. Why? What? What are you doing with this man? You are a teacher's assistant. You have two children. You make $15 an hour. You should not be dealing with this foolishness. And you told us earlier that you have spent, what, $15,000 on Joey's ass? Girl, what the, get the shit. I can't even, girl, I, damn it. And then we find out that you're a cheater too. You're a cheater, he's a cheater, your ex is a cheater. This small town is getting, I'm nervous, dear God. She's talking about she wants him to be a father figure for the kids. And he told her that the kids are like puppies. Uh-huh. Boy, let me drop you off at your mama's I, puppies, my ass. I'm telling you what, she better be careful. As soon as he got back in the car, she took her debit card back. I said, don't worry about it, girl. He still got the number. You better believe it. And you let him have your debit card, too. I hope she's able to pay her damn rent. Uh, let me just tell you, Joey is about to rob you blind and cheat on you. And uh, I bet when he does cheat on you, somebody's going to be pregnant. You know, either you or... Or the woman. I'm just saying, something ain't right about this dude. I don't like him. I don't trust him. And the whole coming home, the kids are all excited and they're dressing in matching pajamas. I said, oh, hell no. Kim, girl, turn your thing piece up too, because this is ridiculous. I'm sick of you. You falling for his bullshit. No, ma'am. Talking about is something about what he does to her. Nobody makes her feel the way he makes her feel. I said, oh shit. I guess he should make you feel real good when you're paying for it. I mean, isn't that how it goes when you pay for the... Anyway, let me go and move on.
Honey, now listen. They introduce us to Bianca and Daniel, and already I'm sick of them. Bianca is 23 years old. She is unemployed. Daniel is 31 years old. He went to jail for aggravated burglary in the third degree, and he's also in there for DUI. I said DUI. I already couldn't stand his ass. You know how I feel about DUI drivers. Get the hell out of here. Anyway, Bianca is a straight up idiot. So we find out that she was almost killed by a friend who was drunk driving and she didn't know that the friend was drunk and the friend drove up an airport ramp and into a wall where Bianca had her cracked her neck and her back, lost her voice for three months after having surgery and she decided that she wanted to reach out to somebody on the prison pen pal site who had went to jail for DUI. Make it make fucking sense. I can't. I can't. Okay, I think maybe she suffered a little brain trauma after the accident. Because ma'am, is your brain on? No, absolutely not. She has gotten a huge settlement from this accident. And she is using her money on Daniel. I said, wait a minute now. You done went and got this prison pen pal boyfriend, now fiance. And he said, you got what? How much? I ain't going to let it go until I take all the money with me. I'm just saying it reminds me of that girl Haley and Daniel from Love During Lockup a few seasons back when she got that settlement and should have been putting that money away for her son. Instead, she was paying for legal fees and putting money on that idiot's books. Dalton. That's what his name was. She was an idiot. Oh my God, I'm sick of this. So she had a couple of friends. Both of her friends were trying to be the voice of reason, especially her little friend, Andreas. Now, Andreas had some big, beautiful hair. I mean, his hair was great. Anyway, he was trying to help her out. And he says, you know, um, are you going to stop drinking? Because, you know, he's got an alcohol problem. And she says, no, that's his problem. I said, excuse me? Anybody who loves an alcoholic would not drink around that alcoholic. You just don't do it. Now, I'm not saying that Bianca can't have a drink or two, you know, but just don't do it around him. You know, go out, hang out with your friends, have a little dinner with a couple drinks, but don't bring that shit around him. She's like, oh no, that's his issue. Then she gets on the phone with his mama and his mom says, well, he's going to have a hard time staying sober, but I know with you loving him as much as you do that you won't drink around him or anything. And she says that he's a drug addict. This dude tells the producers that he has not been sober the whole time he's been in jail. He has fallen off the wagon. I said, oh no, what? He's been in the prison mixing his bread and oranges. Dear gosh, making that prison punch the hooch. I watch way too many crime shows. Anyway, this is not going to work. The man is a complete jackass. She is 23. He is 31. He can smell the desperation, the naivete all over this girl. I'm sick of her. She's an idiot. She has rented an apartment in Arizona, got it all decked out so that this guy can move in with her when she gets there. So she's leaving Florida, moving to Arizona. I said, now you sound like Andrew from the last season of Love During Lockup. He's talking about he doesn't want to go to the halfway house. He's going to try to come to the apartment. Her friend Andrea said, no, no, he needs to go to the halfway house or he's going to go to jail. She's just going to let him do what he want to do. Both of her friends said the same thing. She is absolutely delusional and she's just going to do what she wants to do. The girl says that Daniel is the man of her dreams. I said, girl, you have been having nightmares. This is not a dream. You are about to pay for the most expensive lesson that you have ever gotten. That settlement will be gone in no time flat and majority of it will be spent on drugs and alcohol. Mark my words. I wish you the very best. Moving on. Letitia and Keith. Honey, listen. This is a bunch of bull. It really is. I truly believe that Letitia knew good and damn well that Keith was not getting out of jail. 
And with all of her legal situations that she's going through, all the lawsuits, all the arrest, everything that she's going through with this boss lady tax situation, in my opinion, allegedly, I think she told the WeTV people that he was possibly going to get out so that she could get on this season and make a little money. She's on here talking to someone saying that the public defender withdrew from the case. I said somebody who paid $15,000 for a wedding ring. What do you mean you're public defender? You don't have any cash for a lawyer. Then she mentions that they have a paralegal. Does she not know that paralegals do not practice law? Uh, this makes no sense. Not to mention her weave has been out of control this season. Totally jacked up. She calls down to the court and they tell her that there is no way that he's getting out. He is not eligible for this immediate release. He is not getting this release. She tells her that she needs to call her attorney. Listen, I already told you last week in my spoiler alert, Keith is not scheduled to get out of prison until February of 2025. He is still not out of jail. This is a bunch of bullshit that her and her husband and WeTV have cooked up for ratings, in my opinion, allegedly. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.